Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Welcome to a new series. So, in, now we'll be studying the Shiksha Ashtaka prayers, the eight verses, the instructions given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, please join us in the study. And today we'll be studying the very first verse. And let's begin with Harinam. Please join us together. Hare Krishna.
Please join us for Guru Pranati. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishnaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashati Veshitarine Om Adhyana Timarandasya Dhyananjana Shalakaya Chakshiram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Girin Yatripata Daham Vande Shri Guru Dina Tarayam Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Dear Devotees so Acharyas have explained that complete Krishna consciousness is actually captured in these eight verses provided to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is none other than Lord Krishna himself in the mood of Radharani as his own devotee, right? So he is appearing and he's giving us this love of Godhead, right? Goloka Prema Dhana Hari Nama Sankirtana. So we'll be talking about the glories. But before we start with these glories, there is a beautiful story that appears in the scriptures. And this is story is related to Ramayana. So those who are interested in Ramayana would enjoy this. Those who are interested in Holy Name would enjoy it as well. And everyone else will get attracted by the blessings that we'll be covering today. Hare Krishna. So, once it just so happened that, you know, Valmiki in his previous birth, he was also born as a Brahmana boy. And just like the culture is, you know, in Sanatan Dharma, after the age of five, the children are sent to Gurukul. So he had gone to Gurukul and in, for seven years he was studying at Gurukul. And, you know, very obedient, very much following the instructions of his spiritual master. He was serving his spiritual master and studying as a brahmachari, right? So that's where you develop your achar, your behavior develops, the samskar develop and so forth. So once it just so happened that his guru, the rishi, he had gone out on a pilgrimage. And they used to live a Brahman near the ashram. So near the ashram, they lived a Brahman. And this Brahman was a very pious soul and he would, you know, take care of, and sometimes like Brahmins, they, you know, get in charity, cows, land. So he would very nicely engage everything in Lord's service. However, while taking care of, you know, farming stuff, you have to handle many sharp instruments. So it just so happened that he was handling one of the sharp instruments, it fell from his hand and there happened to be a calf right under it. So the weapon fell on the calf and the calf died. And when people saw what had happened, they started saying various, you know, things about this Brahman as how he has killed a calf, you know, Gohatya has occurred by his hand. So he wanted to just commit suicide. He was feeling so bad having uh, you know, hurt another living entity, he was feeling. But then he thought about going to the ashram and asking Rishi for a possible solution. Because if you die without proper prayaschita, then you have to suffer. So that is not the solution. And rather, by killing your own self leads to further sinful, that's a sinful reaction, that leads to very bad hellish condition. So he was a Brahmin, so he was aware of these facts. And he said, wait a minute, before, just because mundane people are telling me that I should commit suicide, I should not just do that because that would be further sin. I should take advice from the sage. So he went to the ashram and he was inquiring about the sage. So this Brahmin boy was there. So this uh, Brahmin, he looked in full of distress, right? And Vaishnavas, they are compassionate towards all living entities and especially towards the conditioned souls, fallen conditioned souls, and especially one who is in distress. Because that is where Lord Krishna says the four kinds of people come to him. Chatur Vidha Bhajante Ma Jana Sukriti no Arjuna. Sukriti. So pious people, four kinds of pious people, they come to the shelter of Lord Shri Krishna. 
आर्थो जिज्ञासी अर्थात ज्ञानेश भरत सो वन इज आर्थो राइट आर्थो इज वन हुज इन डिस्ट्रेस सो दिस ब्राह्मण वॉज इन डिस्ट्रेस जिज्ञासु इज वन हुज इनक्विजिटिव हु वॉन्ट्स टू नो वाई इज दे सो मच यू नो पेन इन दिस वर्ल्ड वाई इज दे सो मच स्ट्रेस इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड वाई इज दे कॉन्स्टेंट सफरिंग वाई हैव गुड थिंग्स यू नो बैड थिंग्स हैपनिंग टू गुड पीपल एंड वाई यू नो पीपल कॉन्स्टेंटली फाइटिंग विथ ईच अदर वॉट इज द कॉज यू नो एंड वाई आर वी हेयर टू स्टार्ट विथ यू नो वाई एम आई हेयर अथ तो ब्रह्म जिज्ञासा वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस लाइफ सो दैट्स इनक्विजिटिवनेस एंड देन अर्थार्थी अर्थार्थी इज वन हु वॉन्ट्स वेल्थ वन हु वॉन्ट्स डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ यू नो थिंग्स फ्रॉम दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड सो वेन दे वॉन्ट दे प्रे टू लॉर्ड कृष्णा you know thinking that lord krishna is the order supplier so at that stage they are looking from that perspective and they come to lord so please you are the sarvalok maheshwar you are the supreme proprietor of all material and spiritual universes so if you can provide everything so please provide me such and such i'm looking for a promotion i'm looking for a beautiful wife or i'm looking for you know obedient children i want i'm looking for devotee association i'm looking to serve a devotee means different kind of you know aspects and there are it ranges you know all the way in different areas uh, and uh, gyani gyani is one who is in knowledge and he is inquiring in knowledge that you know what is the purpose of my life so he is looking for that supreme goal so of all four you know this brahman happened to be in the you know distress then the second one was inquisitive third is seeking wealth or property or other sense objects and fourth is knowledge so one who is seeking knowledge knowing inquiring about the purpose of this life so this bhaman was in distress so the boy could identify that he has he is in distress so he asked what is the reason why what happened uh, he said no no i want to talk to the sage the boy insisted the brahman boy insisted so uh, then he explained to the boy that you know i have i was engaged in farming while i was sharpening the instrument it fell and that as acting as a weapon killed a calf so the brahman boy understanding that this is a very pious brahman thinking what would be suitable he said oh you have to just chant four times ram you know lord's name the one who gives pleasure to our hearts ram and this will be rectified the brahman was happy he was like oh just four times chanting the holy name lord ram's name means will purify this i'll be free so he was very satisfied paid obeisances to the boy and he left now after some time when the sage returned you know when you come back after a long journey and you have people staying at home you inquire from them hey did anybody come to meet me is there anything in the email is there anyone inquiring was there a phone call for me you know, basic inquiries so he was just basically inquiring and then this brahman boy said not really except for that brahman yeah that brahman came and this brahman you know came but he is satisfied so now the guru asks okay what why did he come what was the purpose so he says actually by mistake he had killed a calf so because he had killed a calf he was feeling very distressed and so i told him just by chanting of lord ram's name four times you know ram 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 you will be free of this sin and i hearing that the sage became angry he said you have no faith why four times even by once chanting lord ram's name lord ram's name one can be free of all sins so the boy was shocked the sage says you have no faith you go away from my ashram and i curse you that in your next birth you will be born as a hunter right hunter is further below the shudra category like malecha and yamuna is that category and you so again the profession so it's not the birth but rather it is the profession that describes and the qualities so he was endued with those qualities you will be endued with those qualities you will become a hunter and then you will be purified of that condition by chanting lord ram's name which you will not be able to chant properly yet at the same time you will be delivered by this very holy name and we all know about uh, valmiki's story that how even though he was born as a brahman's boy he got lost in the forest and he took the shelter of a hunter who taught him how to hunt 
to, for survival. And then by Lord's mercy and by his pious credit in his previous life and the early life, he met Devishi Narad. And Devishi Narad revealed to him that, you know, you need to purify yourself. We you know about that story. So that is the main aspect. So now what are the, you know, what's the moral of the story that we covered today? It's very important that one should not hurt another living entity. One should be, you know, you know, should not cause any distress to any living entity, you know, and not even offend. Means that's what to talk about offense. No distress at all. And that's given in Bhagavad Gita. Yasma Anurdhishte Loko Loka Anurdhishte Chaya. So Lord is glorifying his devotees, that one who is not, you know, distressed by others and who does not put others in distress, you know. Harsha Maisha Bhayo Devge Mukta Yasa Chame Priha. So he is saying that who is constantly, you know, unaffected, equipoised and not affected by favorable conditions or unfavorable conditions and constantly engaging in my devotional service, which is chanting of the Holy Name, starting from Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And then, second lesson we learn is that we should be careful in giving advice to others. Because when we give advice, we become responsible for what the person does or the people do after they receive this advice. And third is that the holy name is supremely powerful and the power is what we'll be discussing in the very first verse of Shri Shiksha Ashtaka prayers. So please join us in the recitation and then we'll get started with individual aspects of this verse. Shri Shiksha Ashtaka prayer verse 1. Cheto Darpanamajanam Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapanam Shayah Kairav Chandrika Vitaranam Vidya Vadhu Jeevanam Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam Pratipadam Poonam Rita Swadhanam Sarvatma Swapnam Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam Snapnam. So, the meaning is that, you know, we'll be looking at individual aspects. Let there be victory for the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna, which can cleanse the mirror of the heart and stop the miseries of the blazing fire of material existence. It is the waxing moon that spreads the white lotus of good fortune for all living entities. It is the life and soul of all transcendental knowledge. The chanting expands the blissful ocean of transcendental life. It gives a cooling effect to everyone and enables one to taste full nectar at every step. So seven blessings, beautiful blessings starting with Cheto Darpanam Ajanam. So the first one is, it cleanses the mirror of our heart, the holy name. So what does it mean? Cheta. Cheta is, you know, it starts from Chetana. Chetana means consciousness. So we become conscious, you know, from our heart, understanding who we are, right? But how do we know who we are? If we are looking in a mirror and that mirror has a thick layer of dust on it, can you see yourself? You may see a shade, but that, that shade may not be actually yours. That may be distorted by the light, right? We have seen that. That when the light is falling from a different angle, you know, our shadow has a different shape. So it depends on how the light, which is, you know, basically in this particular case, its material energy is darkness. Krishna Surasama Maya He Andhakara. So Lord Krishna is like, you know, bright sun and maya is like darkness. So when we are in darkness, what can we see? Yet at the same time, we have some scars that we are carrying from various lives. So though some scar influence the way we see, perception, right, is based on our sight. You know, how we see what we, 
what we see. So we may be seeing a beautiful painting, but if we don't know it's a beautiful painting, we may just think it's a combination of colors on a piece of paper or a canvas, right? So the samskar, the impressions that we are carrying, because of that we are conditioned. And Srila Prabhupada explains that there are Nitya Siddhas and Nitya Buddhas. Nitya Siddhas are the residents of the spiritual uh, you know, universe who are eternally liberated. And Nitya Buddhas are the living entities in the material universes who are eternally bound, conditioned. So sometimes it's surprising. So when we go to the spiritual world, we become Nitya Siddha. How could it be? The aspect is that for many millions of births, we have been conditioned in this material world. And we think that I am this body. And we look in the mirror and we see the body and think that, yes, I am a man, I am a woman, I am an American, I am an Indian, I am a European, I am white, I am yellow, I am black, I am tall, I am short, I am you know, big, I am thin. All those various things that we look in the mirror is not really us, it is the body. Yantra Rudhani Maya. It is the Yantra, the machine provided to us by the material energy. And all the other characteristics, the abilities are basically being provided by material energy. And we as living entities are riding in this, you know. So think of it. If you are riding a bicycle, the capability of a bicycle is very different than the capability of a car, which is very different than the capability of a helicopter, which is different than the capability of a plane. So that's where we are looking at bodily conception of life. Rather, we have to rise above and understand who we are. Right? And that starts with the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Where we understand that we are the living entities. Who we are? Jivera Sarupoya Kishnera Nityadas. So we realize our position, our, you know, who we are. Sambandha. So again, Sambandha is the next phase. So we'll be studying Sambandha. So it's very important that there's three stages of pure devotional service or uttama bhakti, right? Unalloyed devotional service. Sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti and prema bhakti, right? So in this, uh, in Shishisha Ashtika, the five verses refer to sadhana bhakti, where we as sadhakas, practitioners, are trying to perfect, you know, our devotional service. So this is the first five verses of Shikshashtaka. Then the next two verses, sixth and seventh verse, they refer to the Bhav Bhakti. And finally, the eighth verse, in combination with the six and seven, refer to the Prem Bhakti. So those are the three stages of pure devotional service. And then the Vedic knowledge, Sambandha Vidhya Prayojana. So Sambandha is again referred to when we are establishing ourselves in a, as practitioners and trying to practice. We are establishing our Sambandha relationship that I am an eternal servant, Lord is an eternal master, my relationship with the Lord is established in the first five verses. Then, you know, Abhideya is the process which includes all eight verses and the Prayojana is the goal, right? And that Prayojana is addressed in the last three verses. Now sometimes people, they just want to jump to the bhav and prema bhakti, right? They say, oh, I just got initiated, I am liberated now. <laughs> sometimes that happens. And it is very scary uh, position to be in because it quickly, you know, drops us. Instead of rising, we fall down to the prakas sahijya stage, the moment we become proud. Krishna doesn't want us to be proud. Rather, Krishna tells us that by engaging in devotional service, as we understand our position as an eternal servant, Acharyas have, by their own example, have shown us that they think that actually they are servant of all servants. Srila Prabhupada, when he was giving a very you know, nice discourse at a university, and he was talking about the four classes, right? Chatu, Varna, Maya, system. So, when he is talking about it, so there was a student, he says, oh, so which class are you in? Because Srila Prabhupada is talking of these four Varnas, Brahma, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. So Srila Prabhupada at that time, he said, I am the fifth class. I am the servant of all these four classes. And uh, some of his disciples, they noticed that there were tears shining in you know, Prabhupada's eyes. 
because he is seeing, saying it with full emotion that you know and that is the mood acharyas have shown us that a devotee the more we purify we feel that we are servant of the lord and that is you know because of the cleansing of the heart yet the more dust there is the pride and we lust anger pride and we delusion all these bad qualities you know anarthas they will re reside and these are like weeds how can our bhakti lata grow amidst all these weeds so we have to constantly pluck out the weeds while water our bhakti lata beej and that watering process is the chanting of the holy name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so it is very nicely described that when we have a clean nice mirror then we can see who we are similarly by engaging in devotional service by chanting of the holy name by engaging in sankirtan movement we can understand who we are jivera swarupaya krishnera nityadas so why do we want to become you know a servant because by taking to this process is the next one maha bhava maha davagni nirvapanam so bhava is conditioning right bhava also means you know what condition we are conditioned so and it also means you know bhava sagar a great ocean of a great body of water so this it extinguishes maha davagni nirvapanam so it is extinguishing the fire of material existence that we are thinking i am this body and so when it extinguishes the fire right all our senses which are burning they become pleasing they are pleased they are satisfied and we are able to become calm and able to understand if someone is sitting inside a house and the house is on fire and you ask the person hey you get out no person says no 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 i am very happy here what would you call such a person right so it is very important for us to understand that we are actually in a forest fire and we are right in the middle of that forest fire so it is very important for us to come out of that forest but at the same time if we are in the middle of a forest and the forest is in you know at it's on fire from all directions then it is very important if somebody can extinguish that forest fire yet at the same time we have been given this ability to take to the chanting of the holy name sankirtan yagya so by the chanting of the holy name this forest fire of material existence it dies out shreya kairav chandrika vitaranam so it refuses the moon rays of bhava bhav bhakti for the highest good of the soul so that has been explained by the acharyas so shreya of good fortune and kairav refers to a white lotus which actually you know komad lotus that actually blossoms at night and uh, chandrika is like and so just like you know the waxing moon is constantly increasing similarly and it's giving more and more soothing experience to the you know living entities just like when we watch at night and the moon is increasing in its size similarly the moon shine the pleasing the beauty and the uh, you know peace around so right after fire you know uh, excessive heat when you feel cooling effect due to you know nice breeze or due to you know nice rain or something and even taking bath it pleases you 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 feel you know satisfied you feel saved so it gives you first is your anxiety is gone now second is that your pleasure is increasing you are experiencing bliss so it's driving to that direction so just like on the waxing moon and you know the, it's a good sign you know and that sign continues to grow so their fortune continues to grow and what what is this white lotus flower is soul we living entities so we get this light so we blossom our life blossoms with happiness and we are able to reflect it back to the world so again this is our you know and so the moonlight diffuses all around vidya vadhu jeevanam so vidya is vadhu so if transcendental knowledge vidya or veda you can say 
is trans that transcendental knowledge is vadhu wife then she must have a husband right there cannot be a wife but no husband so there has to be husband who's the husband sankirtan yagya the chanting of the holy name is the husband so it is the life the chanting of the holy name is the life and soul of the transcendental knowledge and anandam buddhi vardhanam so we talked about just like the moonshine is increasing somebody can say is this also increasing is it expanding so it's expanding this transcendental bliss is expanding like an ocean is overflowing so we have seen a lake overflowing we have seen a stream overflowing and now the ocean is overflowing so from that so it expands the bliss now we living entities our size is 1 by 10000 so we are 1 uh, 10000 of the tip of the hair now it's not the width of the hair so think of himalay right himalay is so big means is mount everest let's talk that if somebody says can you you know measure the you know right. so circumference of at the base it would be very difficult it will be a uh, miles and miles long right but if you reach to the top of the mount everest at the peak you can easily you know embrace it so that's the tip we are the tip of the 10000th part of the tip of the hair that's the size of a living entity and so our pleasure would also be just like that but no it is like ocean so there are three kinds of happinesses that have been described in the shastras first is uh, that comes from sense gratification bhoga right so when we engage in this sense gratification so that acharya is described as like a drop right of water while then is brahmananda so brahmananda is to merge into the effulgence the brahma jyoti that is like a puddle right you know calf's hoof print so that's like you know that much and then comes the ocean and what is this ocean what third category of happiness this is prema so it's arising from the love of godhead so when we experience the love of godhead then we get to the prema bhakti and prema ananda state so it increases like the ocean is overflowing this is the transcendental knowledge and you know that expands the bliss uh when shila prabhupad he received a letter from a devotee and in the letter the devotee was saying i'm so fallen i'm so tiny i'm so insignificant so shila prabhupad was you know compassionately reading it and then later on he said he started writing i have such big big problems i have i have been tormented with so many big troubles i have this herculean tasks ahead of me so shila prabhupad said if you are insignificant how can you have big problems right yet at the same time by chanting of the holy name we get the ocean of transcendental bliss which is this ocean is overflowing we are in the waxing moon the good sign where it's the moon shine is expanding so we even though insignificant are experiencing things which are as vast as ocean so there is no limit to our pleasure you know, that comes from the chanting of the holy name and then somebody can say okay if this is going on then maybe you know at some time there may be some interruptions but there are no interruptions that's the next blessing prati padam purna amrita swadanam so at every step at every moment there is we are tasting the complete nectar we are experiencing the complete mallow and then comes the sixth blessing or actually seventh blessing sarvatma snapanam so premananda is completely pure so when we are experiencing this ocean of bliss it is not ocean of salt water it is not ocean of dirty things it is ocean of complete bliss what we have been hankering anand bhay abhyasat all living entities are seeking happiness you know and this happiness what we get is like a drop if we get all kind of sense gratification in this material world and when we engage in you know seeking liberation or merging into brahma jyoti then it is like a calf's hoof print but when we engage in devotional service by chanting of the holy name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare 
we get the ocean of bliss. So with this mood, you know, please chant the holy name. And most of us are in the sadhana bhakti stage where we are as practitioners trying to perfect our chanting. But knowing that this is the blessing, these amazing six blessings that endure our life, that fill our life with transcendental bliss, we should continue to chant the holy name with this mood. Like Anshila Purpa said, this is transcendental sound vibration. And it's, we should be chanting like a cry of a child in this prayerful mood that, please, my dear Lord, I have fallen in this material pool. Please pick me up and put me as a, you know, atom of dust at your lotus feet because I am in a suffering state, I am in a conditioned state. Bhav Maha Davagni. So that is, material fire is going on. Hare Krishna. So we just covered verse Yes. So we covered the very first verse of the eight verses and with respect to the uh, three stages of pure devotional service, Uttam Bhakti, it, this particular verse is part of the Sadhana Bhakti and also it is establishing our relationships, it's identifying our relationship with Lord Shri Krishna. And now in the next second verse will be covered in the next class and so forth. So we'll be dedicating one verse per class. Please join us at that time. Hare Krishna. Please join us for some more Krishna.